Hey watchers, welcome back to the channel. So these are the new Stratton Legera chronographs uh, still going on Kickstarter. The campaign is st uh, still going as of this recording and uh, I'm going to try to get this video uh, before it finishes. So Stratton Watch Company is something I wasn't familiar with uh, before you know I got these watches. Uh, they were established in 2015 and I think the MO is based on their love of racing cars, classic cars and watches. So they combine, I guess, passions from these three areas into their timepieces. Um, so uh, th these pieces are in the current Kickstarter, the Legera chronograph. They are actually four different models and uh, Jody from Just One More Watch has uh, kind of done a showcase of these and then he posted the watches to me. So, you know, th these are courtesy of Stratton. They provided these prototypes and I'm just going to go through them to show you uh, what they are. So starting uh, on the left is the standard quartz style chronograph, standard style case quartz chronograph. Uh, the next one is a standard style case, meaning the pushes are on the right side of the case in an automatic followed by uh, a bullhead, so bullhead meaning the pushes and the crown are at the top of the case, a bullhead in quartz, followed lastly on the right here by a bullhead in automatic. And I'll go through uh, kind of the, the differences because it can be a little bit confusing as to what exactly are the features of each. Okay, so before um, I get into the uh, variations here, uh, just to mention that the initial Kickstarter prices were 329 Swiss francs for a quartz chronograph with leather strap uh, or the stretch gold was uh, uh, 859 Swiss francs for the automatics with uh, leather straps uh, and then you know the, the stretch goals include uh, bonus uh, bracelets I think and bonus straps and, and whatever other uh, stretch goals you can see it on the side there are quite a few that they have listed and quite a few have been achieved now, uh, before we go into the standard features, I will mention, apart from the two case styles and the two movement options, there are actually five color variations in each of these options that you can have. So two case styles, two movement options, and five color variations means there are 20 different watches in total, okay? Uh, that, that's really what you can get. The color variations are as you can see here, or at least four of them. So you got the black dial with black leather. Uh, you got this kind of gray dial, right? Uh, with the, the matching leather, blue dial with the blue leather. And then uh, lastly, over here on the, uh, the one that you can see on the right here. And there is also a black PVD one, which uh, I don't have a sample here to, to share, but you can see it on the website. Okay, standard features. Now, all of them have uh, 316L steel. Okay, I'm just going to pick up the quartz standard here, right? They all have a, a, a screw in, you know, very nicely done actually. You've got Stratton logo right in the middle there. A screw in style etch case back uh, with a very nicely done crown, you know, kind of this, I don't know what you call that. It's not really an onion crown. It's really quite a, a different style, uh, nicely done crown with a small Stratton logo on the top here. Right, with those uh, screw-in case back and crowns, they have a wa water rating of 100 meters, so that's the standard all across uh, the collection here. Uh, the dials are sunburst, right? Let's see if I can kind of show that. Okay, so th there's a bit of a sunburst effect on the dial here. Right, hopefully you can see that. Uh, they all have uh, applied steel indices all around that you can see, and they have circular textured subdial. So there's a bit of a texture on the subdial there, right? Circular texture and then a kind of a little subdial chapter ring and they are all surrounded with this kind of cushion style square windows which are applied onto the dial you know, hopefully uh, that's visible here as I show you this blue model which is probably my favorite model actually, the, the blue color here. Right? They have an orange chapter ring surrounding the dial itself and the chapter ring uh, is printed all around the outside of the dial. Uh, Bataan steel hands with an orange central second, uh, a chronograph second hand that you can see there. They all have BGW9 on the hour, minute and subdial hands, not so much the chronograph seconds, uh, as well as the chaptering pits 
and uh, the bezel is also loomed. And I'll put a loom shot right here uh, of the four watches to let you see how they glow in the dark. And it's the blue BGW9, as you would expect uh, from BGW9. Okay, so on top of the, the case uh, is a 120 click unidirectional bezel. And they, the bezel actually is pretty solid. I, I you know, they say they're going to refine this, but I, I think already this bezel is not bad. And you know, you can see that, right? 120 click unidirectional uh, bezel. It does have a sapphire cover over the top, uh, and it's got the kind of this vintage one to twelve numerals uh, on the bezel itself. Uh, on top of the watch dial is a domed sapphire crystal. So that's what that is. Uh, all of them come with a 22 millimeter uh, stitch tropical leather strap. So this perforated leather that you can see there, right? Which right, you can see the perforations here, the extra perforations on the side there. There are 22 millimeter uh, lug widths for these 22 millimeter straps, of course, and they all come with uh, brush steel buckle there with the Stratton name that you can see there. Okay, so that that's the the standard features. Now going into the variations here, I'm going to start. On the left and then work towards the right here okay so starting on the left this is the standard quartz chronograph it's got a seiko vk 63 movement in here uh, so that means it's got a one-fifth central seconds chronograph function with flyback so hopefully i can just demonstrate that for you here so as you start the chronograph as you press the reset button Right, it, it goes straight back into the zero. So that's the flyback function there. Subdials here, they're all different. The subdials, the displays are all actually slightly different. So just take note of it. And uh, the three o'clock subdial here is actually a 24 hour totalizer. So that's actually the highest totalizer count of all of them. Uh, the, the rest are in 12 hours. Uh, running seconds that you can see there in six o'clock and then nine o'clock is the 16 minute totalizer. Case dimensions in the standard uh, quartz is 44 millimeters. It is 16.5 millimeters thick, including the top of the glass there, and then 49.5 uh, is the lug to lug distance. Now you may see some different uh, listings on the website. I've actually measured this with calipers, so I, I think that these are the actual in-hand measurements of these watches that I have here. Overall weight is 114 grams on this watch. Um, now going into the finishing, uh, the finishing of uh, both of these models are the same, okay, the, the standard uh, case models are the same. So on the top is actually circular type of brushing, right? Transitioning into a polished uh, bevel there, and it's got vertical brushing on the sides. Interestingly, on the bottom, it's kind of got this matte, almost a bead blasted finish. I don't think it's quite bead blasting, but it's a matte finish without any uh, visible directional brushing that I can see that bottom there. Of course, the case back surface there is polished, as you can see. Okay, so that's the standard uh, quartz model. Now moving on to the uh, standard automatic. All right, show that to you. So this is a Valju 7753 movement with a 369 register on the standard buttons there. Right, 28800 beats per hour, 42 plus hour reserve. Now the hour reserves, it's a bit uh, unclear. Some, some sites list it as 48, some say 44. Uh, the minimum I can find is 42, so I'm assuming it's going to be 42 plus. That's what uh, this movement will have. It's, it does have a quick set date in the standard movement, but they, they've obviously modified it not to have the date display. It does have hacking, it does have a manual winding option uh, at the you know, position after you unscrew the crown here. Right, it's 369 register, so 30 minute totalizer on the 3 o'clock, uh, 12 hour totalizer at the 6 o'clock, and then a running seconds at the 9 o'clock subdial there. Okay, 44 millimeter case diameter. Uh, this is also the thickest uh, watch here, 17 millimeters thick and 49.5 millimeters uh, lug to lug distance. Uh, also the heaviest watch, as you may expect, 133 grams on the scale here with the leather strap. Uh, brushings and finishings, I've gone through uh, with uh, the quartz ones, so they are identical uh, in finishing, so I'm not going to go through them. Uh, now, in terms of wrist shot, I'm just going to put on this one. It's slightly thicker, but it's really only 0.5 uh, millimeters in it. And there it is, the Stratton Legera standard chronograph in 44 millimeter diameter. It is 49.5 uh, lug height there, as uh, I've explained. So that's how it looks. 17 millimeter thickness, 
So it's pretty chunky on the wrist there. And that one's also pretty chunky, but half a millimeter thinner. Okay, so there we have it. That's the, the look of the watch uh, on the wrist there. Okay. Right, going to put that down and then moving on to the third variation. Lots of uh, thing to share here. So this one's the Bullhead Quartz. It's got a Seiko VK67 movement. So they both have the Seiko Mecha Quartz movements in both of the Quartz models. Uh, this one, of course, is a different variation because of the different positioning of the crown to the subdial registers. Uh, so one fifth second chronographs with fire black as well. I've already shown you that, that function on the, the first model. Totalizers are different, however. You have a 60 minute totalizer at the nine o'clock position. You get a 12 hour uh, totalizer at the six o'clock position. And then you have a running seconds, which is in this case actually on the three o'clock subdial. So again, a different position of the running seconds from the first two that you have seen here. The case size on the bull heads are 42 millimeters. This one is the thinnest one. So this one at this position above the glass or the center of the glass is 14 millimeters in thickness. Uh, the watch height, if you measure it from the bottom of the lug here to the top of the case, not counting the crown or the buttons, the top of the case here is 47 millimeters, uh, right? There, there's no real lug to speak of at the top. That's kind of down the bottom here. So that's really the bull head kind of configuration out of necessity. The strap has to come in uh, under the buttons and the crown here. That's really how it looks like. Overall weight, this one is also the lightest. It's just under 100 grams, 99 grams on the scale with these leather straps. Okay, finishing, slightly different, right? Longitudinal brushing at the top surface, right? There is a polished bevel as with the standard case. Uh, vertical brushing, right, all around the side and then transitioning onto longitudinal brushing on the case, right? Polished on the case back side here and that very nice etching on that case back, of course, right? So the finishing is actually the same in both the quartz and the automatic bull head, as you may expect, you know, because it's the same on the other two. All right, so that's really uh, the bull head quartz. Now, because this is a, the thinnest one, I'm gonna show you the actual wrist shot here. And there we have it, the blue color Stratton Lugera uh, chronograph on my 17 centimeter wrist. And this one really wears the best, I think, you know, it, it really fits me the best. The other ones, even as I wore it on the minimum size, it was actually slightly loose. This one actually, uh, granted it is on the minimum side, the smallest uh, uh, punch hole on the strap here, it just fits my wrist nicely. Anything else will be too loose, uh, but it wears the best. Now the, keep in mind it's a bull head, so this end does stick out more. So it's it, difficult to get under an office sleeve, right, a shirt sleeve, uh, but that's, that's what these chronographs are. They're not really for office wear, they're more casual sports utility. Okay, so there we have it. Okay, and then last but probably not least, I would think, uh, is the Bullhead Automatic. So in here is a Valjus 7750, the good old 7750, turn 90 degrees for the Bullhead configuration, and you will know uh, the subdial registers if you know your 7750s. So 28, 800 beat per hour, of course, 42 plus hour reserve. It does have uh, hand winding at the zero position here as you unscrew the crown. You can hand wind it and it does hack, of course, this movement. Uh, no date, uh, you know, the date complication has been removed as you obviously see here. Totalizers in this case, uh, 12 hour totalizer on the three o'clock uh, subdial. It's got a 30 minute totalizer on the nine o'clock subdial and then uh, running seconds, as you can see, you know, moving away there at the six o'clock subdial. All right, again, a different position of uh, running seconds to, to the standard automatic, which has the running seconds at a nine o'clock, right? They're all slightly different, which is, I think, a, a good thing. You know, you're getting some variety on the layout on these chronographs here. Case diameter is the same as the quartz, 42 millimeter case diameter. Thickness, however, is more chunky and it is quite chunky, 16.5 at that position above the center of the glass, but obviously it gets a lot more chunky towards this end here where the, the you know, strap comes out because of the bull head. Uh, crown and buttons that you can see there. Uh, the overall case height slightly more than the quartz, right? From the bottom of the lug here to the top of the case there is 48 millimeters in the height. Overall, this is also nearly as heavy as the standard uh, automatic. It is 131 grams with the leather strap. 
All right, finishing, I've already gone through as with the quartz uh, bull head. So I'm just going to show you this on the wrist now. And there we have it, the bull head automatic on my 17 centimeter wrist, right? Nearly as well wearing as the quartz bull head, but it's definitely got a chunkier feel. It's definitely heavier, right? Over 30 grams heavier. And that side gets a little bit more chunky that that bull head side there. Hopefully can, you can see there that that's even more chunky feeling there. Okay, so that's how it looks like on the wrist. And so guys, there it is. There's the Stratton Chronograph uh, showcase here. So, you know, what I really like about what this company is doing is they seem to be offering very original and fresh designs based on a very clear uh, design flavor or design DNA in, in terms of racing and motorsports. Uh, and I, I really like what they do, especially their, their square watches. They've been really interesting uh, to see. I think they have quality materials in, in solid cases. The cases do feel very solid. They, they say they're going to improve on the bezel feel, but already I think it's already feeling pretty darn nice. Uh, it's got, you know, these watches have very nice case specs. I love that case spec. Some of the very best case specs I've seen, you know, something different, something interesting, right? Not quite at the level of, say, an Amiga Seamaster, of course, but, you know, that's really quite a fascinating one to look at. And I think because they have a wide range of case styles, movement styles, as well as color variations, hopefully uh, there's something for everybody here. You know, everybody can find something to their liking. Personally, I, I really like this color and, and probably this one wears, uh, overall wears the best for me, even though it's uh, quartz. Uh, I, I do prefer automatics overall. Uh, I have to say if I had to choose one personally, that's probably the one that suits me the most in the quartz with this size, with this color. Okay, the, the things to, to note if you're going to consider this watch. Now, they are large, especially at the 44 millimeter uh, of the standard uh, case, right? They are large. This one's, uh, you know, pretty chunky. The bull head does wear a bit better, but uh, the raised profile at the top of the case, right, is something that you have to take note of. And it may not be to everybody's liking. You know, there's a reason probably why bull heads aren't super popular. You know, they're actually quite unusual to see. Right, the, there are button and dial issues. You may have noticed, for example, in this one, uh, the alignment of the totalizer here, the three o'clock position isn't quite right. So there, there are kind of little uh, glitches here and there, but that's because these are prototypes. They're not quite refined and you expect that all of this will be completely sorted out for the production uh, watches and the production watches will also have better overall finishing. That's what the company has advised in their Kickstarter. Uh, I think there's a potential for a more mature bracelet. They, they do offer a bracelet option uh, uh, on the Kickstarter. Um, that's kind of like a standard looking bracelet. I think uh, they can probably look at improving uh, bracelets over the future and they have been known to, to ship bracelets separately. They started making a lot of uh, bracelets and bands uh, and they've moved on to watches in the recent years. So guys, there we have it. A long review, but you know, I had to go through all these options to make it clear what's available. Uh, let me know what you think of Stratton Watch Company and of these Legera chronographs. Particularly, uh, I'm interested in your thoughts if you actually own any of your previous models, you know, let me know how you find them. So guys, there we have it. If you enjoy my videos, do consider subscribing. New content every week, always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology. Thank you again for sticking with me and as always, I'll see you guys next time.